G'day, folks, and thanks for joining us for a special half-hour edition of Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures out of Vanuatu. And tonight I fish off the Port Villa coast for yellowfin tuna, one of the great adversaries of the Pacific Ocean. And Steve Starling travels to Bokissa Island to do a spot of fishing in those magical waters. Put your feet up, folks. I'm sure you'll enjoy the show. Folks, I'm into it again. 40 miles off the coast of Vanuatu in the middle of the Pacific. It appears we've hit a small school of yellowfin tuna. And with me is Mr. Trolling Lures himself, Peter Pakula, from our very own shores. Good to see you, Pakula, and welcome to the show. And it's nice to be here, Rick. Well, I tell you what, this small yellowfin has nailed your lure, so he mustn't have heard of you before, because anyone that's heard of Pakula Lures stays clear of him. <laughs> Pretty much. That's ah, a small yellowfin. Have a look at this one here. We'll get the... We'll take him on that corner? Yeah, we will there. Thank you, Marcus. We'll take him on that corner. Now, Decky Marcus is there. And this is a very, very good start to the day. Early in the morning, nice bait schools around. And our friend Charlie from Vanuatu has sighted some good working bird flocks. And that is the absolute essence of good fishing. And so is this. This is the food chain. This is what the fish we've come to get eat. That's right, folks. The fish that we're after today actually eat these fish. The lifeblood of the sea. A small yellowfin tuna wanted to do a half pike. Now, I gave him seven out of 10 that the entry wasn't good. But Marcus sends him back to mama. Off you go, son. Back into the magnificent cobalt blue waters of the South Pacific. Sorry about the little bit of slime and water on the lens there, Noel. But that's fishing. And unless I'm mistaken, folks, this is a fishing show. School of yellowfin here. Oh, gee whiz. So we decided to put the light gear on, put a couple of poppers on, and I've got a Neil Patrick Halco slice on the end of this particular outfit here. It's a little Shimano six kilo job. And these are only small school yellowfin, but this is a very, very good way to catch them. The cool is very busy behind me with a popper. This is a very, very good training effort for young people wanting to get into game fishing. It gives you an understanding of the power of these little blighters. And you've got to understand when they grow to six and seven foot long in the old scale, that they can become pretty tough customers. Well, the glare's a bit much here, folks, so please excuse me putting on the old glasses again. We've got people pulling in fish, people losing fish, people throwing up, people from magazines taking photos. OK. Uh, coming up to the double now, I think, there, Marcus. Got a bit of colour down there. Yeah, nice yellowfin, eh? Very, very nice yellowfin. Yeah, we ought to take a look. What a beautiful looking fish. Well, there are, folks. Another Pacific yellowfin. I reckon about 10 kilo would seem out on six kilo line. So sport fishing is a lot of fun. Big game fishing, I believe just a little bit more fun. Birds working, a good colour in the ocean, 
a good head of juvenile fish, which is the food source for the big fellas, we look like we're in business. Okay, you want to take him, uh, take him out there, Marcus? You go, you got him. And I'll give him a bit of a kiss. There you go, mate. All the best to you. Wagons, ho! How going there, Peter? It's hard work, isn't it, Rex? It's shocking. Oh, it's a nice little one. Striped tuna. Yeah. Now, a lot of you back home would recognise this species of fish. Out here, they call them a skipjack, skipjack tuna. These are commonly called striped tuna across in Australia. And a lot of you would bridle these up at Bermagui and around Sydney and catch some magnificent fish. Now, I don't want that hook in me from that grim reaper, so Peter is going to do the job. But can you just imagine on the continental shelf or at Montague Island, folks, something like this over the side? Uh, Thank your mother for the rabbits and hold on to your hat. Boat again. We'll catch a few fish out of that. For sure. I'm here on beautiful Boquisa Island, just a few kilometres from the coast of Espiritu Santo in the northern end of the Vanuatu chain of islands. And with me is Steve Morgan. He's the editor of Queensland and New South Wales Fishing Monthly magazines. And we're both pretty excited about being here, only three or four hours from our homes in Australia and surrounded by these beautiful warm waters. And I hear the fishing here is pretty good too, mate. It's got to be. We've got this nice deep water in close. We've got reef. We've got pelagics moving through. We should have a good day today, Steve. And we've got a boat to fish out of. She might not be the prettiest vessel in the world, but she's seaworthy, and that'll do us. Come on, mate, let's get into it. Get into it. And what we're doing here is gathering fresh bait on our way to the reef fishing grounds. It's always a good idea to have the freshest possible bait when you're going bottom fishing. We've got some frozen stuff, but we saw a mixed school of fish chopping around on the surface. We got a couple on the troll lines, and now we've stopped and we're just casting lures, dropping them down and jigging them. And what we seem to have is a mixed school of rainbow runners and small tuna, and there's also quite a lot of large sharks here underneath. There's plenty of action. These rainbow runners are a great bait fish, very pretty fish. A lot of people back home will be able to see a resemblance to the yellowtail kingfish. They're very similar in body shape to a, uh, to a yellowtail kingfish, but they're uh, a lot more colourful, especially fresh from the water, as you'll see with this guy. They've got this beautiful couple of blue stripes down the side. <laughs> they're pretty active fish, as you can see. Very popular uh, bait for marlin trolling. You rig one of those up whole and troll it, and it's a great marlin bait. But you can see these stripes down the side, which is how he gets his name of Rainbow Runner. Lovely big yellow tail. Anyway, ooh, I'm going to hang on to him for bait. With so many of these rainbow runners and small tuna around, oh, there's a big, big shark following mine. Steve's got the fly rod out, and he should be in for some fun here in a minute. This one's a mackerel small mackerel. So we've got all kinds of fish down here. I oh, know it's actually uh, it's actually a scad. Uh, look at that one Steve, scad isn't it? Yeah that'd be a good marlin bait if we're off after marlin but yeah. since we're after the pool eh, we'll chop him up and use him for bottom bait. He'll be fantastic, he'll have... Yep. Re yes, he's on on the fly, well done. Listen to that reel go. Well, this is a great tip for those saltwater fly rodders out there. If, you're, uh, if you get onto a patch of action like this and there's plenty of fish around and there's people catching them on the lures, get that fly rod out and throw it in because uh, these fish love a fly. Sounds like you might have connected with something a bit bigger. Yeah. It's taking a bit of backing here, so... 
Let's hope a shark doesn't get in before we do. Well, there's sharks everywhere under the boat. I can tell you I'm being a bit careful about washing my hands over the side. <laughs> Isn't it great to just find a school of fish like this in such calm water? There'll be a lot of guys in Australia that'd, uh, that'd kill for this, eh, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. And it might be raining, but it certainly hasn't put the fish off. No, and you couldn't say it was cold either, could you? <laughs> no, I'm sweating here. <laughs> now you're back into your fly line. Yeah, the fly line's here now. And he's coming up rather quickly. You might not have a whole fish anymore. Oh, you've got a little... Uh... I was very lucky to get that through the runners. <laughs> Did you see it on the way out? <laughs> so you're suspiciously uh, Yeah, suspiciously lifeless. light. <laughs> no, no, he's still swimming. I think he's going to take off again in a minute. Oh, very nice. Mac tuna. A little mac tuna. Kawa kawa or mackerel tuna. Seem to be found throughout the world. One of the one of the lightweight pelagic fish. That's one of the we saw them jumping, and that's what alerted us to the presence of this school of fish. And what he's done is just burnt himself out. He's been being. Oh, look at that! The fly fell out too. Great reef fishing bait. They're beautiful when they come out of the water like this too, Steve. Yeah. The stripes along the back. Fantastic. It's gone a little bit quiet on the surface now. I'm not seeing fish chopping and the birds flying around like they were before. What I'm going to try doing is letting the lure sink well down in the water column. Just because the fish have disappeared off the surface doesn't mean they've vacated the area completely. This is quite deep water, and chances are they may just have moved down to a lower level. So I'll let this metal lure sink down and then retrieve it up fairly rapidly. And we'll see if they're down there. Yes, that's where they are. <laughs> Down deeper. I got that lure well down. In fact, what I did was retrieve it part of the way in and then let it sink again. So it was coming up practically vertically straight under the boat. And something's grabbed it. He's no monster. But it just goes to show that just because you can't see something on the surface doesn't mean the game's over. Oh. He was a fair way down there. Here we go. I've got colour on him now. Looks like a... Scad. Yep. Oh, this is a different kind of scad. This is what they call a finny scad, or in Queensland, they actually call him a mad fish. I'm not sure why. I'll show you this guy when I pick him up. He's got a, um, a, tail, a tail assembly a little bit like one of the tuners. Very thin in the tail wrist. And he has scoots modified lateral line scales down here that are very, very sharp, a bit like uh, some of the trevallis, a giant trevally. What do you call him, Steve? Um, I also call him a madfish, and I'll right. tell you why. He's got a, uh, he's got pectoral fins here yeah. that look like an albacore. Right. He's got eyes that look like sort of a cross between a tuna and a big eye tuna, and he's got a tail that's a bit like a, uh, a tuna as well, like a cross between a mackerel, a tuna, and any other pelagic fish in the ocean. <laughs> so it's a pelagic fish uh, designed by a committee, this one. That's right. It's got a little bit of everything. Great looking fish, and again, another good bait fish. Very red meat from memory. So uh, the redder they are and the oilier they are, the usually the better they are as a reef fishing bait. So we'll hang on to him. A mad fish. Just get this boat out of this reef area a bit because something has nailed this popper. Turn quick, Dave. And it is popperama. Absolutely popperama. Now we can settle down to fight this fish. You're talking about a mean critter. An absolute mean critter, folks, has nailed this popper. Oh. 
you've got to understand that this pressure on that particular spool is just enormous. Shimano, 6,500 bait runner, seven kilo line, 10 kilo tippet. And something has nailed that as if there's no tomorrow. And the pressure on that is just awesome. Uh, are there any questions? I reckon you're in for about a oh, six or seven kilo one. Starting to get a little bit of line back here now, but this is a very big fish. Tell you what, folks, this is no Port Phillip Bay flathead. We're awaiting from Sydney Harbour. This is a big fish. I think he might go a bit better than six or seven kilo. I think the cooler better stick to making lures and give away the predictions and leave that to people who know a bit about it. But this is a good fish. This is a good fish. Got a bit of colour out there now, Noel. A bit of colour. Uh, there's two and, bits of colour. Yeah. <laughs> there's something behind it. What is it, a shark? Baby shark. A baby shark is behind this fish. Actually, it could be another GT. Could be its mate. There's no cobia out here, is there? No. Nah. Well, there's something behind it. But I think you'd go a bit better than six or seven kilo. It's another GT. Any chance of you getting that one on, mate? No? Yeah, but there we go. All right, but we'll just let him go. But that's a fair sort of a hunk of a fish. Oh, yeah. I reckon six or seven kilo might have been a bit light on for the old Pakula, the makers of the lures. Have a look at that. Have a look at that little one. Look at the it. fish behind him, folks. Now, this is serious stuff. This is absolutely serious stuff. How do you want to play this, mate? In towards you? Yeah. Ooh. Holy mackerel. Come down here and have a look at this, folks. Have a look at the mouth on him. Isn't that a serious fish? What I'll do now is just back off my reel in case Peter Pakula can't, uh, can't control this fish, but he can because he's a fish man. He's a macho man, oh. Big Pete. I tell you what, Joe will be glad of you, mate. Have a look at that. That's six or seven kilo, eh? It's a big six or seven kilo, What's isn't it? it? Congratulations, Rick. That's, that is a fantastic Well, effort. thank you very much, mate. Fantastic If I can get uh, a little set of pliers out there, mate, I tell you what, isn't this fantastic? Well, you can still uh, smell the brand new fiberglass off this 34 foot black watch. Vicky's choice here at Vanuatu, folks. But I tell you what, let's have a look at her. Absolutely magnificent. Give us a bit of a, uh, an idea of what you think she is, mate. She'd be a good uh, 13 kilos, I'd say. That's terrific. And that is a spectacular capture because you probably get one in 50 of these that you hook off the yeah, roof. Yeah, I reckon. Give us 30 pound, will you, folks? Don't ride in. Just give us 30 pound. I reckon. I love you, darling. I'm going to let her go. I'm going to let her go. She's going to slide over the side and she's going to live and just reproduce some more for us. Off you go. So, folks, I'm hooked on Vanuatu. A coin every now and again into the Bicky bin and Lynn and I and even Missy, if we can get it across the uh, Pacific, are headed for Vanuatu. Because if I'm going to die, well, it's not a bad place to die, folks. Oh, I feel faint. folks, Vanuatu is truly a magical place in the Pacific. And if you get a chance, go over there. You won't be disappointed. We'll see you next week in the wonderful world of fishing. I'm Rex Hunt, and goodbye for now. Now, you won't find many more pretty species in the sea than that, folks. A beautiful blue-finned trevally. blue fin for obvious reasons. And it's a good idea there's two of you on the boat to just work as a team and one just keep the fish nice and calm because if you've got jumping fish all around the boat you've got hooks and lures going in one direction and then all of a sudden you end up with well things in bare feet that you don't want there